Hi, my name's Jason, and I'm here to teach you the Ophidian collectible card game. With me is Rafi. How you doing, Rafi? Good, how you doing? Good. Let's start out by talking about the gladiators. This is gladiator combat set in the future, and you have a team of gladiators that you bring to the table, and your opponent has a team of gladiators. Those gladiators have a victory point total, which is in the blue area here, which tells you how much they're worth. Now, each player has to bring 10 points worth of gladiators to the table, divided up any way that they choose, but you must have 10 points. Now let's talk about some characteristics on the gladiators. Each gladiator you bring to the table must start at level one. The level is in the upper left-hand corner of the card, so all of your gladiators will start at level one. Next to the level is the discipline that that gladiator excels in. They might have one or two disciplines, and each of those disciplines will tell you what they excel at, what they're good at, and the cards that they will allow you to play. The disciplines range from portals, summoning of different things, psi is mental abilities, war, which is weapons and attacks. We have cybernetics, which is building cybernetic minions and manipulation, mysticism, spiritual type things, and finally biotech, which is genetic manipulation, mutation, things like that. Now, let's take a look at one specific gladiator. Let's take a look at little jinx. First of all, let's talk about the card type, which is located below the level. She's a gladiator. You can always see what type of card you have by looking at this area here. We have the title and the subtitle, which is just a flavor title. We have keywords in this area, which are referenced by other cards. So she's a human. Something else in the game might say, play on a human, play, can't play on a human. Victory points, indicated here, are how much that gladiator is worth. So if you were able to take out that gladiator, it's going to be worth two victory points for you. We have this blood drop here and a number above it, which indicates life total. She can take eight damage before she's defeated. Below that, we have rage, which I'll explain later. And then we have attack damage. Now, that's how much damage she will deal in an attack. Also, gladiators will have some sort of ability that's in this area. And then we have a line of lore. Finally, the number of the card and the collector's information will be in this area here. Now, let's talk about how you get a hand of cards because that's where you're going to be playing everything from. You have a maximum hand size at the start of the game of seven. So when we begin the game, you will draw seven cards, and you'll draw an additional two cards. Now those additional two cards are over your maximum hand size. So you take two cards and place them on the bottom of your deck. The first card type I'll talk about is a quick hit. Now the quick hit, indicated here by quick hit, is a card that you play it has its effect, and then it's discarded and it goes away. Next, we have a pump. A pump is a card that plays on another card. This one is a pumped gladiator, so it will play on a gladiator. It's a card that plays on that guy, stays in play. Finally, we have minions. Now, minions like the other cards, and they remain in play, and that is indicated here by the minion. Now, some things that they have in common is they have a level up in the left corner here. And they also have a discipline. Now, in order to play this card here, this distraction, I need to have a level one Psy Gladiator on my team. So on this team, I have Trace. And Trace is a level one Psy Gladiator. So she would allow me to play this card. To play this Mega Ram Boost, I would need to have a level one Cybernetics Gladiator. To play this card, the Bombastic, I would need to have a level one Cybernetics Gladiator. In addition, this little dot here, means that I need to have another Cybernetics Gladiator on my team. The level of that other Gladiator is not important, just that I have at least two on my team, one of which is level one. Finally, there are different levels of cards, such as this cage bot here. This is a level two card. To play this card, I need to have a level two Cybernetics Gladiator. Now, as you look through the card set, you'll notice that some cards will actually have a higher level and that dot, and again, the level only indicates the primary gladiator's requirement. The other ones doesn't matter what level they are. Now, minions also have life and attack damage. Uh, that damage can range all the way down to zero, which means that they would attack for no damage at all. Now, gladiator combat isn't free, so everything that you do still costs money. In this case, we use credit points. Everybody has a counter card. Now, this counter card will let you keep track of how much credit you have and how many points you have left to spend each wave. Every wave, you start with 10 plus whatever wave we're in. So in the first wave, you'll get 11. In the second wave, you'll get 12, and so forth and so on. So how do you use these points? 
if you wanted to play the card Mega Ram Boost, we'll take a look at the play cost. Now the play cost, which is here, will tell you how much it costs to play this card. This costs me one, so I would actually just remove the one off of the counter card to play this card. Now if I wanted to play Spiked Fists, for example, their play cost is three. So I would take it off of here and move this counter from 10 to 8 because 11 minus 3 is 8. So tell me, Jason, what makes this game different from all the others? Very good question. What makes this game different from all the other card games is it uses a mechanic called the flow. Now what the flow says is while you have the flow, you have the momentum, you have the action. The flow is with you. And what that means is you're able to do a number of actions, you're able to attack, you're able to play cards. Everything that you do potentially modifies the flow one way or the other. And as long as you continue to do positive actions, such as attacking, interacting with your opponent, you retain the flow. As soon as you do something that is not inherently interactive, something such as playing a weapon, something that's defensive, retreating a character, anything that is building up a defense is a negative action. And that's an action that's going to actually let the flow pass on to the next person. So generally speaking, playing minions is a negative action. Playing a weapon is a negative action. Attacking, moving forward, is a positive action. Now, some cards, such as the Palm Ripple card here, this is a positive action. And it also has a positive flow symbol on it. So playing Palm Ripples, which says retreat target character, is a positive action. You could then retain the flow, follow that up with an attack, follow it up with another positive action, you can even follow it up with an additional copy of Palm Ripples. Playing Spiked Fists, on the other hand, is a weapon card. It says here, weapon in the, in the keywords. But it's a card that increases the attack damage of whoever it's played on. And it's a negative action. There are also cards that have an undetermined flow symbol, this question mark here. And what that says is the results of this card will determine whether or not it's positive or negative. In this case, you roll a die. And depending on what you roll, it's either going to be a positive action or a negative action. The last type of thing we have here are cards that fall outside of the normal flow actions. And those are responses. We have this defensive response, this DR distraction, which is a DR card. And that says, I can respond with this card when I don't have the flow. There are also ORs, which are offensive responses, which are cards you play when you have the flow and you're responding. Finally, there are R cards, which are cards that can play when you don't have the flow or when you have the flow. And those, all of those response cards will tell you in the text when you can use them. Now, the gladiators fight in two different fields, the action field and the support field. Now, the support field falls directly behind the action field. The support field is generally more of a defensive place. In fact, retreating a character from the action field to the support field is a negative action. Advancing a character, moving them from the support field to the action field, is a positive action. There are certain things that being in the support field will allow you to do. It affords you a little extra protection. But you can only attack from the action field. Now, you can put your gladiators when you start the game three up, one back, two up, two back. You can put them all in the action field. You can put them all in the support field. Now, this is a gladiator combat game. So let's talk about combat and how that works. As a positive action, any gladiator on your team can set, that is, turn 90 degrees, to attack any character on the opposing side. It doesn't matter if they're set or unset, if they're in the action field, if they're in the support field. All that matters is wherever they are, that's going to give your opponent less or more options. Now, if you wanted to have Freak Show attack, you would set him to attack and choose your target. Let's say that he went after version 9. So version 9 is the target of the attack. In this case, I have two options. Option number one is to take the damage. Now, Freak Show deals two attack damage, so I would take a die, place two points on version 9. Now, I can use dice, I can use tokens, I can use counters, whatever. We find that dice are usually pretty easy. Option number two, a gladiator in the same field can set to intercept that attack. They become the target of the attack, and they take the damage. Now, if you said Freak Show is going to attack Schaefer Steel Arm here, there are three options that I can do. The same two options as before, that is, one, 
take the damage, two, set a gladiator in the same field to take the attack and intercept the attack, and they would take the damage. Option number three, if someone is being attacked and they are in the support field, one of your unset characters that is in the action field can protect them. It's similar to intercepting in that they become the target of the attack, but they don't set. So if Freak Show attacks Schaefer Steel Arm, I could say version 9 protects. He takes the damage instead, and play proceeds. Wouldn't you potentially be losing an attack if you intercept? Absolutely. There are two reasons why you would do this. The first and most obvious reason would be to keep the character alive. Now, if Freak Show decided to attack Schaefer Steel Arm, again, he's on set. So if I decided to take the damage, you would get a cheer for that. If I decided to protect with version 9, which wouldn't set version 9, version 9 would take the damage, and again, you would get the cheer. Now, the most important thing here is, if you went after someone, say version 9, with Freak Show, and Freak Show intercepts, Freak Show takes the damage, my Freak Show, and I get the cheer, because the crowd likes to see the action. Now, why would you want the cheer? Well, I'll tell you. It's a very important thing in the game. It's used in three ways. The first way is the person with the most cheer is the crowd favorite. There are several cards in the game that have a thumbs up symbol on them, which means while you're the crowd favorite. And they'll have extra abilities, they'll work a little better, they'll do some different things for you. The second way that you use it is a victory condition. The primary victory condition of the game, clearly, is eliminating your opponent's gladiators. Every time you take out one of their gladiators, you get that many victory points towards your winning the game. An alternate victory condition is cheer. If you ever reach 15 cheer at any point in the game, you immediately win the game because you have excited the crowd so much that you've incited a riot, and they rush the field and tear your opponents apart. Everybody likes to see a good riot, so that's always something we want to see people shoot for. The third way you use it is any time your opponent takes a positive action, you can use one of your cheer, that is, remove it, to convert that action into a negative action. So if Freak Show were to attack version 9, and I had my Freak Show intercept, I would actually get that cheer. I could immediately use that cheer to convert your attack, which was a positive action, into a negative action. It doesn't prevent the action. It just says that once that action's over, it's going to count as if it was a negative, and then I would get a chance to do something. Could you explain to me Raging? Sure. Raging says, Whenever your gladiator has damage on him, that is wounds, equal to or greater than his rage value, in Freak Show's case that's six, they're considered raging. A raging character has certain characteristics that you need to remember. You cannot retreat a raging character. Now, when a raging character is attacked, certain other things can happen. Say you had Trace set to attack Freak Show, okay? Freak Show is going to actually deal one damage back to Trace because he was unset and raging after he was the target of an attack. Now, if Freak Show were set and raging and the target of an attack, he would actually become unset. So again, being set and being raging means that you get to unset when you're attacked. Being raging and being unset when you're attacked means you're going to deal one rage damage back to the attacker. Now, that doesn't mean that the attacker doesn't do their normal attack damage. It just means that there's more of a risk involved in going after someone who's raging as opposed to someone who's not. Now, finally, once both players pass, we move into the breather. Now, the breather is broken up into several steps. The first step is the regenerate step. In the regenerate step, we take all of our set cards and unset them. Okay, that is, reset them into the vertical position. We also reset our CP. By resetting our CP, we once again put it to 10 plus whatever wave we're in, moving into. So we move into wave 2, and we set that to 12. The last part of that regeneration is regenerating our hand. First, you look at your hand and discard any cards that you don't want anymore. Those get put in your scrap heap, and you don't use them anymore. Then you would draw back up to your maximum hand size, Draw an additional two cards, take any two cards that are in your total hand that you don't want, put them back on the bottom of your deck. Once we're done with that, we move from the regeneration 
into determining the flow. That is, determining how the game is going and seeing who's winning. So in this example, you have six damage on Freak Show, and I have seven total damage on my Gladiators. That means that I'm not doing as well, and I'm going to get to start with the flow. And for the rest of the breather, I will be doing everything first. If Schaefer Steelarm had been knocked out, for example, he has a life total of six. He would be sitting in my funeral pyre, but that six would still count towards the total number of wounds done to my gladiators. Now, we would move into the maintenance phase. Any cards that you have in play that have a maintenance cost must be paid for, or they would be scrapped. So, if I had a spiked fist card sitting on version 9, and you had a bloaters in play and a ran check in play, we would take a look at the maintenance cost. For a spike fist, that's a maintenance cost of 1. That's the only card I would need to maintain if I wanted to. If I didn't want to, I could keep my money. Otherwise, I would pay the 1 and keep it in play. So looking at my CP of 12, I would move that down from 12 to 11 to keep the spike fists in play. The promote phase is where you choose one of your gladiators to be raised up one level. Now gladiator cards, like Madame Batiste here, are double-sided. So level one is backed by level two. What this means is you can choose any one of your gladiators and you can just say, I'm going to raise this person up to the next level. That is what's going to allow you to play the higher level cards that are in your strategy deck. Now, another thing to consider when you're raising them up is, for the case of Freak Show here, he has six damage on him. Whoever you choose to raise up also heals one damage. So that's another consideration as far as who you would choose to raise. In Freak Show's case, there's a level three and level four card that is found in your Gladiator stack. So if I wanted to raise up Freak Show from level two, you would simply remove that card and replace it with the level three version. And then, of course, heal him for one damage. Now, the higher level cards are generally more powerful, but they also have a higher victory point level on them, so they're also a better target. After both players have promoted the gladiator of their choice, we move into the maneuver step. The maneuver step is where you take your gladiators and arrange them as you'd like for the next wave. That is the only time that you can take a raging gladiator who is in the action field and position him in the support field because it doesn't count as advancing or retreating. You're simply arranging the field and getting people into position for the next wave. Once both players are satisfied with the position of their characters, we move into the next wave and play continues until we've done four complete waves. And that is how you play the game.